All right, recording is going. All right. Uh, today is September 14th. I want to welcome uh, everyone to our uh, bi monthly. Or we do these webinars twice a month. I want, to want to welcome those who may be attending uh, today live. We'll also be recording uh, this. So we'll actually be on YouTube and check out our channel. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, to that channel and all of our social media. We put a lot of good stuff out there. It can help you out with your business and personally uh, when it comes to technology services. Uh, today's topic that we'll be focusing on will be uh, co-managed IT services, which uh, may be a new topic to some of you. Uh, it has uh, been around for a little while, but we're going to talk about it a little bit uh, today. Talk about if it's right for your organization, how it differs from a fully managed service uh, relationship, and then uh, hopefully walk you through a couple of benefits and uh, helping you make decisions. Maybe it's right for you, maybe something you need. Uh, we're also gonna change up a little bit our agenda. We're gonna talk a bit, we got a couple of current events Lee and I are gonna talk through uh, first half of the webinar uh, that are going on that we pulled just from different uh, news channels and information channels that we have available to us for the IT world. And then we'll jump right into our topics. So, um, as always, if you have questions, uh, you know, please feel free to go ahead and put those in uh, the Q&A uh, window and we will get to those either as we move along in the webinar or we will uh, get to them at the very end. So uh, feel free to ask any questions about anything that we're uh, talking about or uh, bring up. So uh, let's talk about some headline reviews, current events. Uh, Lee, I think the first one that we had talked about I wanted to cover was some of the security updates to the platform Reason Day, uh, which was Zoom. Uh, they, they sent out a pretty good uh, security update here recently, uh, a significant update. I think one of the biggest changes they, or biggest things they add to, added to it was uh, two-factor authentication. So, Yep, they uh, enabled MFA, and I think that's a trend we're going to see kind of blanket every area of logins, especially cloud-based logins. Um, you're going to see it more often, so be prepared for it. Get familiar with setting it up because it, it's coming and it's a, it's a good piece of, of security. Yeah, I think we are always uh, recommend to clients that they uh, find, if they have dual authentication or two-factor authentication available to them, they enable it, especially for hosted or cloud applications provides a, uh, you know, extra, extra layer of security against uh, maybe your password and uh, user credentials being compromised. Um, and it find it very effective, really hard uh, for my, in the most cases, hard to defeat. But if you don't know what two factor is, two factor authentication means that uh, when you're uh, logging on to a system like zoom, uh, you provide uh, what is usually a user ID. In most cases, it's an email address and then a password. Uh, well, that is something you know. And then the two-factor comes into play is something you have. And two-factor can be delivered multiple ways. Most of the time, it's delivered through a text message to your phone. Or in, in this case, with Zoom, they are actually going to be using Google Authenticator. It's like they're integrating with the Microsoft Authenticator, uh, free OTP, and also SMS. So you have multiple ways to get that second level authentication uh, for Zoom, uh, which I think could be very important uh, as we move forward. So that one of the biggest updates coming. So make sure that uh, as you, uh, you know, you use Zoom, which I know a lot of you do, uh, that make sure you keep that uh, application up to date. Uh, sometimes they, they do, they are pretty good about pushing out updates. I get a, a message, uh, you know, pretty frequently to update my client, but you can also uh, force that update as well and get that, uh, get your system updated so you can take advantage of uh, the new features that they push out to. Uh, and not, to not, o not only are they security features, but they're all, they make it fun too. They've got a bunch of filters and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah. So, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's a great, great, uh, great point. But so if you haven't checked out the, the new filters in Zoom, uh, as soon as your team sees them, they will be trying them out uh, regardless if you do or not. So I, I think uh, more companies need to do that. They need to sneak in like little uh, Easter eggs and stuff like that with, with security updates. Yeah, that'd be a great, that'd be great and amazing <laughs> to sort of leave them out there. And then if you find them, you find them. And people like, might, know, people that might encourage people to install more security updates. I, hey, if that, if that's what works, it works. I, I'd love to see that happen. So uh, one of the other things we saw that I wanted to bring up was this article that uh, came through uh, via newsletter was about, uh, you know, sort of 
you know, it was about three years ago, we saw the Equifax breach, uh, which was a very detrimental, devastating breach. Uh, you know, Equifax, Equifax exposed sensitive customer data uh, due to some poor security practices they had. But uh, according to one of the researchers, Greg Foss has mentioned in the article, he talks about how not a lot has changed uh, in the cybersecurity environment that uh, we're still uh, seeing a lot of uh, problems with users and companies updating their machines, closing vulnerabilities, uh, but also not just closing vulnerabilities, but also not being able to react or properly react to different threats, but also events as they happen. So uh, that's two big subjects that really vulnerabilities and having a good incident response plan. Anything you got to add to those two items, how important they are? Just, you know, the, the important thing is to be able to identify your vulnerabilities. Uh, a lot of people don't do that. There's no system in place to identify these vulnerabilities and they're not gonna jump out and tell you they're there. You need to have a tool to, to seek them out and assist you in finding those. Yeah, vulnerability management and, and identification is generally not a free service. There are some free scanners out there. Open VAS is one that we've used before. Uh, sometimes they will bundle those type of scanners in with other products. Uh, I know Fortinet has uh, a vulnerability scanner built in one of their products, but not just, you know, equally important is making sure you close those vulnerabilities. Uh, I did see an article this morning, or actually it was on, on Twitter, where uh, there was a vulnerability release, uh, or, you know, that Microsoft released a patch for last month. It was a big vulnerability. It was a net log on vulnerability where uh, that service within the active director domain could be exploited through this vulnerability to gain domain access or domain admin access to the network very easily. Uh, I just saw this morning, they posted a tool to exploit the vulnerability on GitHub. So it is freely available. So uh, the only way you're going to fix it is to apply a patch, which that's the best. Most vulnerabilities have patches available. Uh, Lee, we have what, two, three weeks, maybe get that patch in place. Uh, before, you know, usually once it hits the, the live world and people know about it, then it doesn't take long for them to get a vulnerability. So, uh, so that was one, one thing they mentioned this article here was about, uh, you know, passion. You've got to keep your, uh, your machines, your, all the assets on your network up to date. Uh, we know with Equifax, that was really what got them breached was, uh, you know, their Apache web servers were missing a struts update, uh, which led to it uh, being, uh, compromised and finally it's still you know cult building a culture of security around risk is still a big problem in organizations just recognizing that cybersecurity is a problem uh, and it's not just an IT problem it's a problem across the entire business uh, so that is also one thing uh, that is outlined there that um, it has to be something that is adopted everywhere yeah I mean, that's that's a pretty good segue talking about the tools uh, with co-managed which we're about to talk about um, working with the client now, we've got a tool on site there to recognize uh, a list of different things. They've got a Windows 7 machine that they're not aware of on their network. So yeah. I've been working with, uh, with their IT staff to, to try to figure out where that's at and what exactly it is. So, um, yeah, you know, you got to have a tool to help find the stuff. Really, you're, just, you're just never going to know that it's, that it's there or present. Yeah, I mean, that... It goes back to the CIS controls we've talked about. CSS number one is inventory all your assets on your network. Know what you've got to protect. So that's right. Uh, you know they in this case didn't know there's a Windows Seven machine hanging out there, and we're able to identify it for them. And and obviously it was vulnerable because Windows Seven is no longer uh, supported. So so uh, those are a couple of current events that I thought were very relevant. Uh, you know, on top of uh, you know we get some a lot of uh, intelligence from FBI on, on different things that are going on. Uh, also, and I will tell you, uh, I've been just getting blown up recently with different types of identification notices and different warnings about uh, the threat coming from uh, Asia with the Chinese, uh, you know, continually trying to hack everything. So uh, that is uh, always uh, or seems to be a very active area as well. So uh, just be aware that the risk is is high. I mean, there's there are people trying to scan and access your network as we do this webinar. I uh, see it all the time. Uh, we, we pulled up our firewall before, pulled up uh, different elements to show those attacks are happening ongoing. So cybersecurity is not something you can ever 
uh, just, uh, hey, I'm going to handle it today and then never look at it again. So in the last two weeks, I probably received more text messages that are that have been fake or, you know, obviously uh, phishing attempts of some sort. But man, I have received more in the last two weeks than I probably ever have. So they call that smishing. So SMS uh, texts are, are definitely a way they can uh, put uh, malicious links in front of you because usually those text messages have a link in them. And then you uh, you hit that link through your SMS, it'll open up a web browser, uh, maybe even download an app to your phone. Uh, so, or ask you for credentials. So uh, they can uh, definitely, you know, pivot into a couple different ways to try to get information from you. So, uh, but those are some good current events just to, for everyone to be aware with, be, be aware of. Uh, you know, we, I, I love cybersecurity. So, you know, as we do these headlines, we may see more security uh, you know, items come up in this discussion and not, but uh, it is a very hot topic, very relevant topic uh, for uh, discussion for sure. So, so let's talk a little bit about co-managed IT services. So one of the questions posed is like, what is co-managed IT services? And I think the best way to really open up this subject is, is really compared against uh, fully managed IT services. Uh, in most cases, as a managed service provider, uh, we will help clients that may not have the resources available to support their IP, IT infrastructure. In many cases, they will, uh, you know, let us handle many types of different services that they can't handle internally. So, but basically that really, when we talk to a client about that, you know, we, we go to their, you know, the owner or the, the executive there and we say, hey, we're going to handle your IT for you. That means every bit of your IT, that whole, uh, you know, scope of services and work and everything comes over to us. And as a managed service provider, we're in a position to uh, provide help desk support, provide backup, uh, provide uh, security, uh, you know, in many different ways, uh, we can deliver those services to that small to medium sized businesses. Now that discussion is much different uh, when we talk about co-managed IT services, generally, when we approach a company about co-managed IT, it really they usually have some type of staff, uh, all you know, within the organization that does IT for them, or does some kind of technology support, either through the infrastructure, through applications, whatever it may be. And there's usually some type of leadership position there. Our conversation with them is not that we want to take all of that off of them, but we want to help them get better you know we want to find ways that we can uh, be a force multiplier with their internal it staff and bring to bear some of the resources we have available uh, to make them uh, you know more effective in executing the company strategy more effective with the projects that they have to uh, execute and just overall uh, helping them in areas they feel like uh, they need help in. So, uh, so when you think about co-managed IT, that's the the big difference. There is generally co-managed IT is is targeted and a service best suited probably for someone where there's an internal IT department, maybe a CIO, a director of IT, alongside uh, some type of staff that they have uh, in place. So. And I think the other thing that makes it different is co-managed IT is a little more a la carte, uh, which means that we can, uh, as a co-managed IT provider, we may not manage and administrate the entire, you know, IT ecosystem. We may just do, uh, you know, maybe just monitoring for them, maybe just help desk, maybe we just help them with security. Uh, so there are pieces and parts of their ecosystem that we can help uh, manage and help them help work for them. So that's the, the I think that's the best way to introduce it. Hey, in, in a managed service environment, hey, we want to we want to be your IT department. But with a co-managed IT department, hey, we recognize you have an IT department. We want to work with you, and for you, and make you better uh, at executing your job. You anything to add to that, Lee? Yeah, I think most of the time, you know, we deal with a lot of medium-sized business that, that, that have uh, somewhat of an IT staff and a trend we see. IT is such a big uh, umbrella of responsibilities. They're typically understaffed. Um, we see that a lot, so we, we can help leverage that. And or it's impossible to know everything. We're fortunate to have a team of guys that have a, a wide range of skills 
so they can help uh, uh, soften or make that learning curve easier for, for a company or just completely offload it to us or, or whoever you might co-manage. Absolutely. With. So. so as we shift our focus to talking about internal IT, I know I've worked internal IT before. I was a director of technology at a company here uh, in Birmingham. But, uh, you know, what are some of the modes we see of internal IT? Lee, you got any thoughts on that? What are some ways we usually see those uh, internal IT configurations take place? Yeah, absolutely. I would say about 85%, 90% of the time, they're just 100% reactive. They're just trying to pick up the pieces, you know, just, you know, they come in and take the day is as it comes. uh, And that's really not effective. I mean, it's got to be done. It goes right back into the capacity. But um, you really want to get ahead of that. And sometimes if you're not staffed to do that, you need a little help. Uh, or, or you work, you know, 12 hour days, which I don't recommend for anybody to do. But um, yeah, I think the, the biggest configuration we see is that one man shop. Yeah. You know, you got one guy, he's the go to guy, he's been there, you know, or, or girl, go to resource, you got a resource in there, they're one person and they're expected to do, you know, a yeoman's work to try to get, you know, IT just basically, like you said, every day, just block and tackle and react and stuff. Right. They usually don't have the time resources to really think strategically, think proactively. What they're trying to do is just say something's break. I got to get it fixed. Something's down. I got to get it back up. So their focus is basically fighting fires all day long. We see that configuration quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, just, and, 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 just keep keep things up and running at that point. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and one of the best places we we see co-managed IT work is really in that understaffed scenario. Uh, when you think about, uh, you know, we have several medium, small, medium, and large clients we work with that do co-manage IT, and a lot of times they don't. Uh, a couple of things we help them. One, they they don't have the staff sometimes to do all the things they need to do. We talked about security is a big one. Uh, you know, they know security is important, but they don't usually they don't have the tool sets, and a lot of times they don't have the staff in order to execute that security uh, plan as well as they need to. Uh, and then also skill set. You, you mentioned that a second ago, Lee, about having the right skill set. I know we've got a team behind us with multiple types of skill sets, but uh, sometimes we we see that they're maybe they don't know how to to run Microsoft Exchange. Maybe they don't know how to run Office 365 or administrate that. Maybe they don't know how to administrate uh, SQL Server very well. Uh, and also the cloud platforms, Azure, AWS, so uh, co-managed IT can help fill gaps uh, in skill sets as well. So sort of talking about, you know, we think we, we've identified a lot of the traditional problems we see uh, in internal IT. Uh, and generally there's a couple different ways that you can handle that. Uh, I think one of the most common ways you can throw more bodies at it. So when you go in, when you look at IT in a business, uh, there's so much stuff to do. The, the scope of work that you have to execute can be so broad. Uh, and one of the best way, one of the ways to do it is just, hey, you throw more people at it. Uh, you hire people, uh, maybe use contractors or bring those in. So uh, that is one way to handle it. Uh, it's also, I believe, Lee, the most expensive way to handle it. Absolutely. Uh, you know, people uh, are not cheap to hire in. And I would say a good IT person onboarding them two to three months, I would say 60 days. You think that's pretty accurate? Let alone trying to find the time to, before you even get to that, trying to find somebody that meets your requirements, you know? Yeah, I mean, the uh, the job markets in some ways is, is pretty tight right now for, uh, you know, even where we're at now. But, you know, you've got to, hey, that, that person in IT has to find someone that they have to, they got to interview them, they got to onboard them, uh, they got to start integrating them into any processes they have, uh, you know, you know, that adds a lot of uh, issues and, and also links into the timeline before they become effective. Um, you know, also training. Uh, we know that, I know training is hard for us to find time for. And I know as an internal IT, when I was in that area, uh, you just didn't have time to just go out and learn new stuff that was happening. Uh, you know, that was uh, new technologies, new security, uh, you know, technology is constantly changing. And it's really easy to fall behind that. So 
but that is one one thing we see that uh, internal IT will do. They will just hey, well, I'm going to get my people trained up. Uh, training's pretty expensive sometimes too, uh, and and also uh, to get really good training, you generally you can't do it virtually. You generally can't do it from your office on site either. Very hard uh, to execute that kind of training simply because too many distractions. I uh, can't tell you how many times I've been trying to train or attend a webinar or maybe something similar to this and have people pop into my office, my phone's ringing, my email's going, uh, my cell phone's blowing up. You know, it's really hard to focus on learning uh, and training uh, you know, to get your internal folks up to par with the most recent technologies. Um, another, uh, you know, way, that, another solution we found in internal IT is just to bring in what we call a seagull vendor. Uh, and that means, hey, we bring in a vendor, they come in to fix the problem, uh, then they pretty much fly away. Uh, and that oftentimes is great, a great short-term fix. But long-term, you generally just end up back in the situation. So that may get you uh, a long distance in a short period of time, but long-term, it just didn't work. Uh, and then finally, and we've seen this happen too, Lee, they just hope the problems go away. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, this, the, the, we, we've seen that play out sometimes and, and we've actually seen, uh, you know, we see, you know, these internal resources, they're so overwhelmed, they're so far behind, uh, they'll just, they'll just quit their job, they'll just move on. Uh, you know, they'll hope, hey, something happens, you know, something triggers an event and uh, sometimes they'll see, uh, you know, hey, maybe we'll just go away. You know, I don't have to fix that failed raid drive. You know, I, I need to replace my firewall you know, maybe, maybe uh, it'll just go away. So, yeah. but, uh, but that's where, you know, I think co-managed IT helps solve all those problems because, uh, you know, we can be a force as a, as a co-managed IT provider, we can be a force multiplier. We can provide uh, resources to help execute products, supplement services. You know, we uh, do have more, probably more opportunity to get training done uh, and also, uh, we're not just going to come in, solve the problem, and walk away. Uh, Co-managed IT is about a relationship uh, between, uh, you know, you and the client. And uh, I think that's more, I think there, there's two ways that gets executed. One, tactically, every day, day in and day out, but also strategically. Yeah, and let's let's go ahead. Let's just address the elephant in the room, too. We see a lot of this when, when we get asked to come on and interact with the, an existing uh, IT staff or IT person, intimidation, the, the, the fact yes. that they think we're going to take their job or the lack of trust there is, is uh, something that's fabricated. It's, it's not true. We're, you know, we're not there to take anybody's job. Like Brian mentioned earlier, we're, we're just there to help out uh, where we can, whether if it's doing the, the, the day-to-day -day support, or whether it's doing the high level engineering uh, for, a, for a, a future solution. Uh, I think that's a big thing that a lot of uh, IT staffs feel is an intimidation and the fear of, of them being replaced. And that's, that's not the case. Oh, absolutely. I, I think that's, that's one of the things and that really go, is a good segue into, you know, is co-managed right for you? And, and I believe there, there are, there are certain companies that work really well with co-managed IT and, and there are some that don't. Uh, it is not a fit for everybody. It's not a fit for every organization and it's not a fit for every culture in, in every organization we see out there. So uh, I think there's a couple of things, uh, you know, is it right for organizations? A couple of things to think about. One, uh, if you're looking for partnership, uh, you know, someone who's going to jump in with you uh, that you can be successful together. I think that's something uh, probably we see that and see that as a very important piece of our managed services, our fully managed services. But I think it's even more important uh, with co-managed IT because a win for them, a win for you is a win for them. And hey, we want to make them better at what they do and how they do it. So, uh, you know, you got to be able to, you know, as a director of IT or as an IT manager, uh, as a CIO even, Hey, if you're going to engage co-managers IT, hey, you got to realize this is a partnership. Right. You got to be willing to want that partnership. Uh, I think flexibility is important too. Uh, you know, we make a lot of recommendations, and, yeah. and 
and not all of them are well taken. Not all of them are always well received. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and sometimes, uh, you know, you have to work through that. And, and I think as, uh, you know, if you're in a position looking at co-managers, I tell you, you've got to be flexible in the way you do things and the way, and you got to be able to, I think, listen and be open to advice uh, and be open to that third party. I know when I was director of IT, uh, you know, I was always looking for someone to help me out because I know I'm not the smartest person in the room, uh, especially when it comes to technology. You know, I want someone there testing my security because I'd rather find out that my security is uh, has deficiencies on my time when I want to than when I have to. Uh, and I always looked at, you know, our reliability of my network. I'd rather find that on find that out on my own time at my disposal than find out when something goes down or something is complicated. Uh, and that goes back into openness uh, and transparency. Uh, you know, I think one thing, you've got to be transparent about what you have, how it's set up. Uh, you've got to be willing to, to, to have those discussions and, you know, not hold anything back. Because, again, we're here in this service to make you look better, to make you more successful, not here to replace you. Uh, you know, we're, we want to be a resource uh, for we've, you to make you look better. Ultimately, we've all got the same goal. We all want to do the right thing. Absolutely. Uh, we, you know, we know we all have, uh, you know, sort of fought those battles uh, with technology. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, you know, we, you know, have all, we've seen a lot of stuff. I think we see probably a broader scope of things in, in what we do now than we ever have. And, uh, and sometimes you don't get exposed to that if you're uh, in internal IT and that's where, Hey, come in and just that day. Hey, we can help you. We can train you. We can show you. Uh, we can share tools with you. We can share. We can bring tool sets to the table you may not have right. access to. Uh, that's been hugely successful for right. us. We've got a great uh, remote management monitoring system, and we extend access out to that to our in, to internal IT group so they can use our tool sets, our processes, you know, some of the efficiencies we have uh, to make you know their delivery of their service and execution a lot better. So. You know, I find that to be uh, extremely important there. So, uh, so those are some things, uh, you know, lead, I'll leave anything out, but those are some things that I think you need to recognize if co-managed services is right for business, uh, is right for your organization, for your business, uh, and where you're at. And I think those are some really non-negotiables uh, when you think about it. You've got to have flexibility. You've got to have openness. You've got to be willing to, to form a partnership and have transparency in what you're doing. Uh, yeah, you know, any, anywhere on this kind of goes back to, which I'm sure people watching this, they've already, you know, go, it goes back to a lot of the five dysfunctions of the team, you know, yep. trust, you know, get rid of the fear of conflict. Let's, adjust, you know, let's ask the hard questions and let's, let's address the issues. Absolutely. Um, so when we think of customers, uh, you know, a couple other, other items out here to see if it's a, if a client or a company is a good fit, generally you usually, have to have an internal IT department. Uh, yeah. Usually it could be a department or an individual. You've got to have that. Uh, and I think this goes back to partnership. You've got to have value in having good IT. Uh, we do see a lot of companies out there that, uh, you know, they don't see the value in having good technology or surrounding themselves with good technology, uh, you know, but you've got to have that, uh, you know, see value in IT. Um, they also generally have value in their internal resources. They see them as being valuable to the organization. They don't want to replace them, uh, you know, and, and they want to make them get better. So that aligns them with our goal, of making them get better uh, as well. So, and, you know, I sort of touched on this a little bit. So finally to round out our agenda for the day is the, the co-managed IT versus fully managed IT. And uh, I think, you know, when we think about co-managed IT, this is something where, Hey, we are a force multiplier. You know, we can be the Calvary. Uh, we can help train you on things. We can help, uh, you know, help you execute that project. We can cover security for you. We can cover backup for you. And we didn't really talk about backup, but I think that's probably one of the most common areas we see co-managed IT be hugely successful. That, 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 and, you know, uh, telecom gets overlooked a lot. A lot of time you get a bunch of network yes. guys and they don't really want to deal with telecom. So we can take care of the tele telecom stuff. Yeah. So that, I think those are two big areas, you know, when we think of our suite of services or our core services, uh, you know, tele managing a telephone system, uh, a lot of network engineers and general IT do not want any part of that. And so we have been, 
uh, very, very successful in, in using our telecom resources to provide support or, uh, you know, engineering, you know, to help make their telephone system better, make changes. They need changes when changes are needed. Uh, the backup's a huge one. Absolutely. Uh, you know, backup's hard. I mean, it takes resources to manage that. Well, and I'll, I'll, I'll just list three of them off too. You know, like you mentioned, backup, um, patching, antivirus, yes. all kind of that monotonous, you know, ongoing monitoring and following are my definitions or my patches. Are they all there? Uh, you know, that's, that's a lot of work to monitor and keep up with that stuff. Absolutely. And you got to have a tool set to do it. Not, right. I mean, you, you're not going to go around to every Windows computer and update it. Right. you're just not going to do it yeah. uh and so you that can't, you can't count on the, just a built-in windows update no. center because if it fails you have no way of knowing that a patch has failed right so uh you know when we think about let's just focus on patching and backup just those two items uh you know as part of a co-managed offering uh with patching hey we can make sure you're getting all the security updates we can make sure you're getting all the os updates and we know when something doesn't happen right uh, we get an alert that says, hey, this machine is behind. And at that point, hey, we can just let you know and you can go fix it. Or maybe you can, hey, we can push it back out or, hey, we'll reach out to the user and we'll try to resolve it, uh, you know, alongside of you or with your help. So uh, that's a great example of this. I think one of the, the, the big, you know, items on the table for an IT staff is keeping things patched and up to date. Backup's another one. How many times we've gone in to do a security assessment or a network assessment and hey, they've got a good backup system in place to have the technology, but you start looking at those backup jobs and those logs, they're not up to date. There was an error that was missed and the backups that they thought they had, uh, they really don't. Uh, hey, so we, we- I was gonna say, what about testing these backups? Do you have time, do you have time well. to, to test and verify your backups? A lot of people don't. It's over no, and, and a lot of people don't, yeah, exactly. So. Uh, we've got processes in place to help with the backups and make sure they're monitored, managed, uh, and that they're successful and can be tested. So uh, two critical pieces there that are, are part of, uh, you know, co-managed IT. If you just need those two items handled, I mean, you're, those are two, I think, core and home runs for an internal yeah. IT department to use co-managed IT for. I, I think you touched up on something good there, too, as far as co-managed. It can be as little as help as you need, or it can be a lot, as much help as you need, you know, and that can be flexible along the way too. Uh, there's no, there's no standard to co-managed, you know? Yeah. I think that's a huge uh, benefit of this service because, Hey, if you're a director of IT or you're an IT manager, hey, you want to go on vacation occasionally. You just don't yeah. want to, you know, head out of town and, and all of a sudden, you know, before you even break the city limits, or the state line, you know, your phone's blown up because some major systems down. Uh, you know, we we we've helped uh, clients in that capacity as well. The co-managed IT arrangement, where hey, we know their systems well enough. We have the same documentation they have. We have the same tool set uh, that they use. And if something is, uh, you know, goes awry, then we're uh, we have the ability to step in and uh, allow them, you know, to enjoy their vacation. They trust us, and so we can come in and fix it to their standards and make sure again they look good hey because they're on vacation and they had a major problem and it got fixed uh you know quickly so we've seen that uh, be a huge benefit so uh so we're about out of time today anything else uh we want to add lee before we wrap it up on co-managed it today no uh i, I think that's it you know i th like i said don't don't fear it we're not there to take jobs uh we're, we're just we all we all share the, share the same goal and we're, we're here to help yeah, so I'm going to sort of wrap it up with, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, you've got, if you're an internal, maybe you're an IT director, an IT manager, and you know that you're short staffed, you may be, maybe you're drowning in, in a lot of, uh, you know, issues that you need fixed, your infrastructure, security, your backups, your patching, you know, all these things are constantly going to be rolling through your mind, or at least they should be, uh, in order to make your, your systems at your company uh, both reliable, secure, and available to the users. Uh, and if you got concerns around those areas about, hey, handling and juggling and all of those services, uh, you know, it's time to have a conversation about co-managed IT. Uh, you know, we have a group, uh, you know, you can contact me. Uh, we have Samantha Caroline as well in our business development department. They can all 
uh, help you determine if, if you're a good fit for co-managed IT and, and which co-managed or which IT services might be the best, uh, may, you might get the most value out of. So, uh, so be sure to get in touch with us if you're uh, interested in co-managed IT. Uh, you know, we have already got several clients that, uh, you know, do this type of service with us. Works out very well. Uh, we, we work really well with uh, different uh, internal IT staff and CIOs and director of ITs as well. So I uh, didn't see any uh, any open questions, so I'm going to close out today. I want to thank everyone for attending. Uh, also, be sure that if you uh, you couldn't attend today, to check us out on the YouTube channel. Follow us on uh, both Instagram, uh, Facebook, and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channels as well. So uh, thank everyone. Hope you have a great day and a great week. We'll talk to you next time. Stay safe.